This is a brief video describing how to take back control over a Whirlpool high efficiency top loading uh, washing machine. Um, there are a couple of issues with this washing machine. This is a Roper. This is one of their, their low end line, but it's the same as Whirlpool, Amana, uh, a bunch of other ones that have the same general structure where they have um, you know some number of dials, um, the lights over here and a button to start and stop. Um, GE makes their own line that, that are different, but this is for, for Whirlpool. There are two things that drive us crazy. One is the lid lock um, so that you can't see what's going on. The But the, the thing that's more bothersome that wasn't obvious on this washing machine, it has temperature settings for, for um, your water. Uh, tap cold, cold, cool, warm, and hot. Um, and you would think uh, hot is hot, but it turns out hot is not hot. Um, all of these temperatures are regulated, um, and it's government regulations, uh, the latest round of which uh, were passed in late 2015. Um, so this washing machine is new from 2016. Um, so the, the meaning of tap cold is that it really is just the water coming out of the, the cold line, uh, water line coming into the uh, washing machine. But all these other ones have managed temperatures. The regulations uh, say what the temperature should be for uh, being high efficiency. So in particular, the cold setting, uh, it was the original intent was to protect you from having water that was too cold. If the water is too cold, then the soap can't work well. So it introduces a little bit of hot water if it drops below a certain temperature. But what I didn't realize and never would have expected is that warm and hot are neither. Um, and it's partly that setting and it's partly also the cycle setting. So in this particular wash machine, the hottest you can ever get is to set it on heavy, not on regular, but heavy, and set it to hot. But at hot, it's actually temperature controlled. So that the, the hottest, the highest the temperature can ever be is 115 degrees. Even if you set your thermostat, like here we have um, a tankless water heater, even if we set it higher, um, the hottest temperature that you'll ever get is 115. Um, the washing machine monitors the water temperature and will mix in cold water uh, so that the temperature doesn't go above it, even if you select it hot. Um, and if you select regular, um, it's even more soft. Um, in regular, it never does pure hot at all. It does a mixture of hot and cold or just pure cold. The warm uh, setting is meant for temperatures like no more in the 90s at most, if not 80s. So it ends up being lukewarm or you know, maybe cool bath water is warm. Um, and hot just feels like a slightly warm bath and then you know cool and colder or whatever. So in our case, we really want uh, hot water sometimes. I mean, that's why we choose the hot setting. I mean, most of the time we wash in cold, but when we want hot, we want hot water, um, mostly to be able to do some disinfecting or deep cleaning of sheets to try to get rid of dust mites. And this washing machine by default won't let you do that. And that's true of all of these uh, high efficiency, top loading washing machines. If you get a front load, uh, they will let you uh, set higher water temperatures sometimes. Or if you get a washing machine that says it has a sanitized setting, but I haven't seen that in a top load, maybe it's out there, but a uh, front load, um, they do that. So, so I had a theory, uh, is there a way that I can bypass this mechanism and really get hot water? I just want the water, the hot water that's flowing into the washing machine, that's what I want. I don't want it mixed with cold water. So um, it turned, there's a temperature sensor that the computer is using to decide when the water is too hot and when it's too hot, it mixes in cool water or cold water. So the idea is to disable that temperature sensor. So the way to do it on 
to take this thing apart, there are two screws. Um, here there are like quarter inch screws. They, um, they're on the back of this panel. Um, there's one here that I can't show you too well. Uh, it's one that goes in here and there's one here. Uh, there's just a metal panel that screws into this plastic here. Then the, the, the next thing you do after unscrewing those two is you use a putty knife, ideally, and you come under the surface. Normally this is um, much more flush. And there's a spring under here that, let me see, like you can see it here. There's a spring. And what you're trying to do is push in with the putty knife so that it flips that spring um, so that this disengages. That'll pop the front of it up. The next thing is that there's this hook back here. There's plastic piece from over here that's hooking under the frame. So once you get a putty knife under this side, pop it up a little bit, go to the other side, do the same thing, pop that one up a little bit. Then you have to pull this top forward so that it unhooks back here. Once you've done that, this whole top, let's see if I can do this one on the hand, uh, comes off and you see the, the insides. Um, this is your control module. So this is live, fully powered. Oh, yes, I forgot to mention that. Um, certainly before you do any of this, make sure to unplug the washing machine or flip the circuit breaker and make absolutely sure that there's no power coming to this because there's lots of 120 volt running through here that will electrocute you. So be sure to do that first. Um, anyway, so this is the control panel. The, this is the computer that runs the, the washing machine. Um, in this case, I'm looking at the parts cost. That circuit board, the piece, costs more than this entire washing machine did. But the critical piece over here, we see this is where the hot water flows in. This is where cold water flows in. And in between is this temperature sensor. And this temperature sensor sits in, right in here with these two tabs. I think you can see they have little hooks on the side that hook into the, the sides here. So you just need to uh, get those uh, sides in, typically using a flathead screwdriver, and then you can pop out this temperature sensor. And once that temperature sensor is out, it no longer uh, thinks that the water is too hot and it will run pure hot water into your washing machine. Um, who knew that this would be so hard, but uh, you can actually get that to work. The other thing that tends to drive us little bananas is the lid lock. So what we've been able to do on this particular washer is there's um, the locking mechanism is up here on the lid and we're able to remove the screws, take this out, and now we can put this down here in the washing machine and it's all happy, it thinks the lid is closed. Now we could, we can do things with the lid open if we want. Uh, of course, this means that you have to be responsible for your own actions. Uh, don't go sticking your hand in the washing machine when it's spinning. You know, don't get close to it, keep kids away from it, all those kinds of stuff. But it's up to you if you if you've bypassed that safety mechanism. But anyway, that getting the hot water to work was the critical one for us. I uh, hope this helps. Um, have fun, uh, be safe, and I hope this was helpful.